Welcome to Nicest Nation. I am your host, Jason. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave us a five-star rating and review. It really helps us out, and it helps us to reach more listeners. And we have an awesome show tonight. We have Nick from Aloha Termite and Pest Control. And we also have Sonia. She is a Hawaii Territory Manager for NISIS. And guys, this is going to be awesome because, you know, people don't think about, you know, the challenges that go on in Hawaii from the mainland because you have different pests, different uh, humidity, different, just a whole bunch of different stuff. So what are some of the challenges that you face as a pest control technician in Hawaii? Go ahead. Let Nick answer that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Hawaii, we have all year round summer, basically. It's an endless summer here. There is no winter freeze to slow down pest populations from growing. So if you leave them to their own devices, they will continue to multiply nonstop. And we're talking about everything from rodents to ants to roaches, centipedes. You have all kinds of flies here. You know, you have your general house flies, you have your drain flies and your fruit flies. And a lot more fruits are consumed in houses here in Hawaii just because they're everywhere and you got to take advantage of them. So a lot of times people have those tiny fly problems in their houses and uh, it comes down to a really concerted effort to know your targeted pest and really kind of attack it uh, on a multi-level um, kind of a way. So Sonia, what do you think, um, what are your thoughts on the pests in Hawaii different, that are different from the mainland? Well, like Nick had mentioned, you know, we're, we are in the perfect environment because of the high humidity. We don't have the different seasons like the mainland. So we don't, you know, we don't have the, the fortune of any overwintering to cut down the, the, the life cycles of the different insects. And so we're just fortunate to have so many pests. And, and so that's why the pest control industry is, is um, a pretty important industry for Hawaii because there's, there is a lot that we have to deal with um, and approaching everything appropriately um, and being mindful stewards here is, is very important. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I've got a question. So one of the big things I've heard since I've started in NISIS is that Hawaii, the termites there are really a problem. Now, can you address some of that? Like what is different? about the termites there than, say, here? So in Hawaii, we do have that very aggressive Formosan subterranean termite because there is a very temperate, uh, you know, just very tropical, warm climate. Those termites reproduce like crazy, and they can be island-wide on every single major Hawaiian island. So everywhere there's people living, you can pretty much find subterranean termites, and they have no problem finding the houses, which are generally made out of wood here because of the climate. And uh, once they do find the houses, they can just, you know, turn them to Swiss cheese in a matter of months. The Formosan termites, way more aggressive than your Eastern or, or Western subterranean termites. And unfortunately, they are the dominant species of termite here in the islands. Um, we do also have the drywood termites. Malaysian drywood termites are all over the place. You know, there's no shortage of that as well. Um, people buy furniture, have it shipped here. People bring furniture in from out of state and they just move around populations and we just have them all. And there's nothing to really slow it down or stop the reproduction from occurring. Gosh, that is something to think about because Sonia and I were talking before we got started. I didn't realize until we were talking about how, you know, you get shipments in Hawaii from everywhere like you know we were talking like japan's right there australia is right there close to you and just people moving to hawaii and coming on vacation because it's a very big hot spot for vacations and just all the different pests from around the world that could come there and i'm i'm assuming i mean they would thrive because of the climate definitely and you know we're geographically isolated so we, we depend on everything the majority of everything being imported and so with that, like you had mentioned, you know, we get we mistakenly might get new species or, um, you know, different invasive uh, species. And it's not necessarily just insects. You know, there's different viruses. You know, there's there's so many different by that definition of being an invasive species that come into Hawaii. 
And yeah, and it, it could be from the mainland and it could be from Asia or someplace else. And we do depend heavily on tourism. So we do, we do have a lot of people coming and bringing extra things also. Yeah, the tourists are one of the main problems when it comes to bed bugs. You know, they're yeah. traveling all over the place, probably on their way back from other countries that don't have as nice sanitation as, um, you know, the U.S. has. And unknowingly, they're just bringing those hitchhikers along with them. And we do have hostels and hotels that are just overridden with bed bugs, and they can never get rid of them. They, they try and they come back and somebody else brings them in. That is an ongoing effort, too. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's something that I was aware of, but I wasn't as aware as now that I'm working for NISIS. And, you know, I'm just like, oh, I didn't even think about bed bugs until, until I started working here. And, you know, you, you know, they show you the bed bug sign, what to look for, you know, like pick up the blanket, look for this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, every time I go to a hotel now, I'm like, so looking for signs of bed bugs. It's another level of paranoia for sure. Yeah, it is. And just another thing that I'm very paranoid about right now is small flies. Just like, you know, the the stories of, you know, them landing on stuff that, you know, you you wouldn't want to put in your mouth and then they land on your food and just, you know, carrying stuff I didn't think about until now, you know. We actually yeah. have. Now, I'm going to say real quick cuz I'm embarrassed by it, but I have kids. So we got some produce and we brought, you know, some, some fruit flies into our house and uh, kids being kids, sometimes they don't always throw away the banana peel and you'll find it like under the couch or something like weeks later. Well, that happened. And so right now we have uh, some fruit flies I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting rid of. And uh, I'm just thinking that, you know, I'm going to have to crawl everywhere and see what other kind of fruit is laying under a chair or a bed or something because you know we have three kids so i'm sure they've taken fruit in their room and just not thrown it away and it's it's in a corner somewhere where i haven't seen it yet because i am fighting these fruit flies like crazy it's interesting and and just knowing that that one little banana pill caused caused such a such an issue and so and you know, and those are things that commercial kitchen workers, they're not, they don't think about those things. And so they overlook that. They don't clean up properly and that leads to issues. And it's not until you, um, you know, you reach out, you teach them that, okay, well, this is, a, this is one of the causes of your, your problem. It's not just for us to come in there and, and spray or, you know, wave our magic wand and, and, take care of it for you. Those, those little things are, are what the, the cause of the problem is. Yeah. So I, I have a question. Uh, King of commercial kitchen kitchens. So do you deal with commercial kitchens, Nick? Yes. Okay. We do a lot of commercial accounts. Okay. So what is one of the big things in um, Hawaii that you have to deal with in commercial? Is it the same thing? Like, you know, like roaches and flies, just like in like we do here, or is there anything else that um, you may have to do with? Because, like I said, I'm not really familiar with all the species of insects that are in Hawaii. I know that there are different things out there that we don't deal with here, but you know, I didn't know if there was something else that may, you know, I don't know, may cause a problem for you guys. It really depends on the kitchen, um, you know, the sanitation standards that the the business has in place. The most common, I would say, hands down, is German roaches. Okay. Almost every commercial kitchen that we've gone into has had some kind of a German roach issue at some point or another. So when we enter those jobs, what we want to do first is a complete flush. We want to get in those cracks and crevices. We want to drive out populations that might not be visible to make sure that those populations don't rapidly increase. Another very common one, unfortunately, for those restaurants that are in downtown Honolulu, which is our metropolis here, are going to be nore rats, roof rats. They are, you know, we have a very dense population in the Honolulu area, and the rats just, they know their way around. The roof rats know their way around power lines. They know their way around um, the, the trash bins and the trees that are integrated into our, um, you know, 
city layout, but the sewer rats, they just can run rampant in our aging sewer systems and come up through all of these different points of entry into restaurants. And they're very difficult. Sometimes you can't access where they're coming into a restaurant. It could be through a hole that was gnawed out behind a giant walk-in fridge. And you can maybe crawl on top of the fridge and see that hole, you know, looking between the wall and the fridge, but there's no way you can access it. And there's no way the restaurant is going to pay for construction to take place on that scale. So in those kinds of situations, we can only do management long term and make sure those populations are under control um, and prevent, you know, all of our customers getting dinged by health inspectors and prevent customers from getting contaminated food. That's something I really don't think about where I live because my town is, is pretty spread out and we don't really have like large sewer systems. So I really haven't, we have mice, you know, like field mice and stuff like that that come in that I've had come into my house. Um, I have three cats and they're worthless. Seriously, they're afraid of like, if a mouse comes in, they run from it. But they're, I mean, they're like tiny, you know, little guys. But yeah, we don't really have where I live. We don't really have a rat problem, maybe downtown. But we still don't have a large sewer system like you would think of like in a large city. But that's something I'm really not familiar with is rats. But I know that, uh, I mean, gosh, there's a lot of diseases and stuff that can come with um, rodents. And that's, that's, you know, no good in any situation. I do want to... I think it's important to note that because we are in Hawaii, everybody likes to enjoy the open air. And so a lot of the commercial restaurants or commercial buildings are, they're, they're all open. That, that poses, you know, a problem. It makes it harder for the pest control operators to do a really good job. Uh, but, but, you know, so they deal with because, the area that Nick was mentioning, Honolulu, Waikiki, that that whole area, you know, everybody wants to go downtown and enjoy the ocean, enjoy the beach and eat. And so it is a big challenge. What do you think the largest pest control issue is in Hawaii at the moment? Is there anything that's, that's really uh, getting to be a very big problem? I know we talked about rats. That seems like a, a pretty big problem, but is there anything that subsedes that or you know there's something that's just greater right now i'd say the invasive species especially the little fire ant i mean would you agree nick or can you think of something yeah no the invasive species that we do have in hawaii are, are you know a big problem but they're not i would say for the everyday person that's in their house or at work, they're going to be experiencing roach problems and those little fly problems on a regular basis. I think those are the things that drive people crazy. Those are the things that really prompt parents to call pest control professionals very quickly because they don't want their kids to be exposed to the roaches or the flies. And it, it's not comfortable when you come home from work and you're bombarded with these invaders, you know, going through your kitchen or flying around your head and you're just trying to relax. That That's a really big issue. Termites is always an issue. I think we do have a pretty good handle on that given how long we've been battling termites here. You have different options, spot treatments, fumigations, and then you have those pre-treatments available. You have those you know, pre-treated lumbers that you can build your houses with. You could do liquid ground treatments prior to to building your structure. Um, there's a lot of preventative things you can do, but termites are always at the forefront of people's minds. Um, property property costs here, they're so high. It's, it's ridiculous what you would get charged for a two-bedroom, one-bath house, cottage, say, on less than an eighth of an acre. It blows your mind. And then a lot of times these, these houses are not even on land you can own. So if you think about what people are actually owning, it's that structure itself. And they can't, they can't bear to imagine some tiny insect eating away at the most valuable thing that they, you know, possess. So I hate you. Okay, guys. Um, I was wondering what exactly do you do to combat the invasive species that you have to deal with? So invasive species, it depends on which one you're dealing with. Um, right now we have two, I would say three, personally, 
very pressing invasive species that we need to take care of. And one is the little fire ant. It's this extremely tiny ant that will bite you and repeatedly sting by your skin, making it feel like your your body is on fire where that's occurring. Their numbers are so high that once, if you're in that situation, usually it's not just one ant doing that. It's a whole bunch of ants and it can feel like an electric burn. And so that is a very hard species to tackle because of its size. It, it can nest anywhere as well. It can be in trees, it can be in structures, it can be on the ground. You just never know until you actually encounter them and you start getting stung by them. And so that's one of the issues that we're dealing with. Another one that's very prevalent is going to be the coconut rhinoceros beetle. That is a, yeah, that is a, uh, the largest insect in Hawaii right now. It's about this big in size. Sorry, just to put it into reference to my actual head so it doesn't look yeah. bigger. I'm closer to the yeah. screen. It's about this big in size. It can fly over two miles yeah. in a single night. And it devastates uh, coconut trees as well as other monocot plants, like all other types of palms. Our native Hawaiian lo'olu palm, uh, which is a very beautiful fan palm. It'll even get into pineapples, bromeliads, a lot of the staple agricultural products here in the state. And then I'd say the third most pressing in, uh, invasive species at the moment is going to be our rose ring neck parakeet. And that is a pretty little green parrot that uh, was originally released into the wild back in like the feast, I believe. And then it's just spread like gangbusters since then. Now they're everywhere. And what they do is they fly in flocks up into our agricultural lands and they do devastate agricultural products. They feed on fresh fruits, which is what a lot of our ag is. And they, you know, can ruin tens of thousands of dollars of product uh, per month for these ag growers that have to wait for months and months and months for a plant to actually produce anything. So we're trying to help out with those three sectors. The parrots are a very difficult one. They're smart. They have a very hard beak, very hard to cage, very hard to catch. The beetles, they live in these palms. Uh, they, If somebody has them on their property and they don't want to pay for treatment, you know, what are you going to do? They could just fly and, and get into somebody else's trees. And those ants, you just like, you can treat a single house, but if the neighbor doesn't want treatment, you know, so there's efforts on all fronts on that. We're trying That's to make that. Yeah, I did not know about the, you know, the parrots and the, uh, would you say rhinoceros beetle? Is that what, it's, what it was called? Yeah, co coconut yeah. rhinoceros beetle. Yeah. Now with those, is there anything, what, what do you use to treat the rhinoceros beetle? Because uh, that's very interesting. Uh, we use a systemic injectable. Really? So that, yeah, that's a, a a product that just got approved by the state not that long ago to be used on our coconut trees, and basically it'll it'll make the whole tree inedible to the beetles, hmm. protecting it for up to a year. Very, very great very... product. Doesn't leach any toxins into the environment. Um, it's very safe. You just can't eat coconuts off of that tree. <laughs> well, that's a bummer. Yeah, that could be could be a problem. Yeah. So yeah. So what? If, speaking of treatments, what? What do you usually use in your day-to-day -day treatments? Like, you know, we were talking about the kitchens and, you know, the termites. And if you could talk about that a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the kitchens, we use all of the general pest control uh, baits uh, for ants and roaches in those cabinets and the hinges where you find them. We use perimeter sprays with, you know, the, the labeled pesticides that are safe to be around in on the interior of your home. But the drains, they really get tackled with Nibor or D with IGR. It's just the best product for those drains. And a lot of people don't realize that if they have a roach issue, the roaches could be coming from the P-trap. They could, they could be coming from that air gap in the P-trap up through the drain into their house repeatedly. And they might not know anything about it, but the long nozzle on the Nibor decan, it just gets into all of those spaces. And it's it's the best treatment that all of our techs just fall back on for any kind of a roach infestation or a complete clean out. Um, Sonia, now what what do you, uh, now the, the Nibor D, um, could you go into a little bit more about the Nibor D IGR? So Nibor D IGR, like Nick had mentioned, it's great for drains. It's It's a great product for commercial accounts kitchens. It can also be used at residential accounts and it does have that label where you can use it in the drain. With the IGR, you're going to be getting all the different life stages of those insects that are listed on the label. 
Um, and it's a perfect product for small drain flies, roaches. And those are the two biggest issues that a lot of uh, the restaurants and commercial ki- kitchens have here. It's a great product and it's versatile. And, you know, you don't have to have a, the foaming equipment with you. It's already ready to use. So it makes the guy's job a lot easier. Um, and then they can be more efficient with, with their work. Yeah, to be honest, a lot of the guys, they just, anytime you talked about foaming drains before that can was available, they would roll their eyes. I got to mix the foamer with the product and I got to lug this thing here and do that there. And, and the can is just so efficient. It's just, it's just That's there. Cool. It's, it's so much more easy to use. And all of our services have had great feedback once we started using that as part of our protocol, our treatment protocols. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, what other, uh, I, I, without sounding like a nicest commercial, because you know this really is about you, but you, you actually brought this up to me and said, hey, you know, I want to talk about the products because you use these products every day and they really work for you. So just... Uh, just, yeah, just tell everybody what you think and just give them a little bit about um, maybe a little bit about what you use to um, get the job done. So uh, in my position with Aloha Termite, I am in charge of education um, for the state. Uh, we are statewide and uh, I do train a lot of our guys on formulations and mode of action and what active ingredients are and why it's important to do an IPM, uh, you know, integrated pest management program for every account and why you should take detailed notes. One of the things I just really wanted to mention was these nicest products, you know, with the Bori, it's just a great product when you you don't have to worry about resistance with that you also know that it's it's safer for the environment than some of these other ais that are out there it's not going to leach as much toxins into the environment which in hawaii it's a big concern we we care about our land we care about our environment you don't you don't live to work out here you know you work so that you can enjoy your life outside of it a lot of people they're spending time in the ocean um, they're spending time hiking and they don't want to be cross contaminated with anything so when you use nicest products you do have that that sense of of you know assurance that you're doing the right thing for your targeted pest um there are a lot of products out there that work great nicest is one of those products that works great and if you have the option to choose one over the other. I don't know why you wouldn't choose it. You know, we use the ant baits, the probate on a regular basis, and we had great uh, results from that. So, you know, we are using them now on a regular basis around our properties that have a lot of uh, activity and not only for ants too, it's for other insects. It, it definitely does cut down on the numbers and we can use less products in general. So I just, I'm a real advocate for it. And I like to make sure that people are, are using that. And part of that integrated pest management education that I like to do with my techs is also educating the customer on what they can do going forward. And sometimes it's things that are out of our control. It's those, you know, those cultural changes, those behavioral changes that you, you have to strategically verbalize to customers and explain to them well, sanitation is very important well, removing this is very important getting rid of that is very important taking away the attractant that is going to do way more than any spraying that i could do once you get rid of those banana peels you won't have as many flies around uh, yeah yeah so uh, I, mean, I do have some nabor digr here so <laughs> there you yeah, go. i'm prepared but those are conversations i just have on a daily basis and uh just wanted to make sure that the word gets out on that. Yeah, thanks, man. That's that's great. I'm I'm so happy that you're enjoying our products. It's always great to hear because you know I, you know, being new to the pest control industry, um, I'm using our products now. Currently, like I use Backus app all the time. That stuff is so amazing. I I can't tell you guys enough how how much I have three I have three cats, and anytime they have an accident, and three kids for that matter, anytime they spill something or just that. That package app just just works. It works. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We have some great products. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. But yeah, yeah um, I want to thank you guys for coming on. This has been a great conversation. Sonia, Nick, it's great. Um, do you have any closing comments you'd like to say? 
I don't, but thank you for having us um, and focusing, you know, on Hawaii specifically. I really appreciate that Nick was able to be on here with us. And thanks, Jason. Yeah. Hey, Nick, real quick, can you tell people in Hawaii where to find you in case they need some help with uh, pest control? Sure. If you're on any island, if you're on the big island, Oahu, Maui, or Kauai, so if you just look up Aloha Termite and Pest Control, if you look us up on Google, we will pop up and uh, we do service the whole state. So wherever you're located, we'll come out there and we try to get out to people as soon as possible. We'll leave no stern, stone unturned uh, looking for those pests that you're, you're having problems with. And we do have a lot of different treatments available from general pest control to fumigation to even those specialized invasive species. All right. Well, thanks, guys, again for joining me. And once again, this is Nice This Nation. And if you could, please like, follow, subscribe, ring the little bell icon down there to get notifications when we go live. And also, guys, just thanks so much for being a part of Nice This Nation. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks.